Good morning. I'm in a good mood. It's a busy day. But somehow, I walked from the mechanic to my work way faster than I thought I could. So I have time for a video that I didn't think I would have time for. And it's got me a little giddy because this part of my ministry fuels me on. I love being a worship leader and I love the children's ministry. But I feel like those are ones I just kind of give to and um, they're satisfying in a different way. But this one, I get to hear so much back and you guys literally fill my cup. God has used you to just beautifully enrich my life. And I, I mean that from the bottom of my heart, you know, I started out on this trying to just talk my thoughts out loud and discover things that are hard to discuss. And instead God just, he made such a beautiful community and I, I just, I love you guys. And um, I'm praying on my way from the mechanics to work. And I'm just like, okay, God, I'm really struggling with retaining your word. And I've been that way almost all my life. And if you've heard a uh, testimony part one, you've heard that I really struggle with memory. Um, it's kind of like trauma based, but I've noticed like it, it hasn't gone away. Like even as an adult, like almost 30 years later from that trauma, I don't retain things well. And it's almost like the more I want to, the more it evades me. And I get frustrated because my, my husband is brilliant and he retains everything. He will learn something and he can remember facts and dates and names. And I get so jealous because I'm like, I could read the same thing over and over and over. And you can ask me a question a week later and I'll literally give you a look like I've never read it. And I have, and it's so frustrating, but I'm praying about it on my walk. And God gave me this beautiful illustration how he's designed it so that I forever thirst for his word. I forever hunger. The danger in retaining, and, and I'm not saying this in judgment to anyone. I think he just knows me and my personality. But for me and my personality, the danger of retaining is that I'm satisfied and I don't return. And the image he gave me is of my favorite restaurant. It's called Marrakesh. It's Moroccan food, but it's not just the food that's good. It's the whole experience. You go there and you're down on the ground on these comfortable cushions on a low table. They wash your hands and this beautiful scent. Everything is so sensory, tactile, scent, taste, touch. Everything is just wonderful. And you slowly just dig into a four course meal. First, they warm you up with a bowl of soup, right? And then, and then you get a little dirty, but just a little. You break off bread and you're dipping it into this like blended up salad, almost like a salsa, but it's what they call a salad. Then comes the course where you're really digging in now and you're just pulling the meat apart. I love the lamb kebabs, the lamb, and then there's the couscous and there's all this wonderful, wonderful food with tons of flavor and the smells just hit you. And then there's dessert with this sweet honey tea. And I have tried to replicate that tea. I cannot, they, I don't know what they do, but it's divine. And the dessert is so simple and perfect. It's either yogurt with fruit and cinnamon, or I'm trying to remember what the other, what, I think it was like some kind of a, a custard, simple, but perfect. And I just felt like God was saying, it's just like that. You walk away from Marrakesh knowing you'll be back. And mostly because the experience is wonderful. It's so sensory. But three, because as you leave, you forget it and nothing satisfies quite like it. There is no other restaurant out there like Marrakesh. And I cannot concoct what they concoct. I mean, it's just, you know, almost frustrating, but wonderful because it forces you to appreciate it and take the time to go, go, to just go again and have that experience. And I felt like God was telling me, that's my word. My word to you is like this wonderful new experience every time you open it, every time you come and you're like a child going, oh, that's, that's beautiful. I, I didn't read that before like that. And I think he knows from my personality, that if I just retained it all, if I just knew all the recipes, all the flavors, all the magic behind the scene, 
Would I come back or would I just recreate for myself, save the money, save the time and recreate for myself my own Moroccan meal? And, and it still isn't quite the same. I wouldn't get waited on, right? But sometimes we treat God's word like that. If we can just retain everything, why open the Bible? I can just think about it. Oh yeah, I know. I remember in this parable, he said this. Oh, I remember in John, he said this. Oh, I remember in Isaiah, it says this. And that's great. And oh, I am jealous of that. I wish I could just call forth verses, but I can't. It is a weakness of mine. I literally have to dive in every time. And I retain the content and the heart of the message. But if you want me to spit out verses and specific facts, like, and I think that's why prophecies are so hard for me because there's symbols involved and numbers and, and they're kind of interwoven. They're not always in a perfect timeline. Like I'm reading Isaiah right now and this is why the prayer started. I was just like, God, Isaiah is hard. It's messy. One moment I feel like he's talking about the first coming of Jesus and the next moment I feel like he's talking about the second coming of Jesus. And I'm like, I just don't understand. Like how am I supposed to like divide this up? And I just don't feel smart enough. And, and then there was that image. My word is like Marrakesh. It is an experience. And it's one you're going to have to return to over and over and over. And it helped me make peace. That might sound silly, but it helped me make peace because he's right. He knows me. I love that every time I open his word, I'm not just feeling like I'm regurgitating something I already know. I open it and it feels new. Even though it's familiar, right? Like going to that restaurant, it's familiar. I have a great sense of expectancy. Like I know it's going to be a four course meal. I know they're going to wash my hands in that beautiful scent. I know, but nothing is like it. And it's like a new experience every time. And I feel like God was saying, your weakness is your strength. And I just felt like I'm going to share that because there's probably something inside you that you feel like is such a weakness that is actually probably using as a strength and you don't even know it. And I just, I think of Paul, right? In my weakness, you know, I am strong. I'm, I'm messing that verse up. See, this is, I always mess these verses up, but I know you know what I'm talking about. But I wanted to re read from Luke 8 and it's talking about God's word. It's the parable of the seed. And I just want to read that because even though it doesn't quite sound like it fits what I'm saying, I'll, I'll catch you up. All right. Okay, here we go. Uh, we'll start in verse four. While a large crowd was gathering and people were coming to Jesus from town after town, he told this parable. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path and it was trampled on and the birds of the air ate it up. Some fell on rock, and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still, other seed fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop a hundred times more than was sown. When he said this, he called out, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. His disciples asked him what this parable meant. He said, the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but to others I speak in parables, so that though seeing they may not see, though hearing they may not understand. And then he goes on. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those along the path are the ones who hear, and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. Those on the rock are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no root. They believe for a while, but in the time of testing, they fall away. The seed that fell among the thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they do not mature. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. 
Now at first, that little ending piece might sound like it completely just pushes aside my whole analogy. And I remember when I read it, I was just like, man, like, okay, I know I'm the good soil, but I'm really struggling on retaining it. And then I realized the persevering part. Those who hear the word retain it and by persevering produce a crop. And I just think it is so much more than just receiving his word. And it's so much more than retaining it. And though I can't retain facts all the times and verses and like the numbers, because God loves to use numbers, right? I can't always retain that stuff, but I retain the heart of his message. And it makes me think of that line and see, I can't reference it, but I know it. This in essence is the message of Christ. God is light, pure light. There is not a trace of darkness in him. And I realized songs, songs help me retain. Because that is a song based off a verse, almost word for word. This, in essence, is the message we heard from Christ. And it goes on and on. And it's in my head and it's in my heart, retaining the essence of his word. And then my part comes into play with the persevering to produce a crop. My side of persevering is I have to stay in his word all the time. And honestly, I say that of all of us, even if you can retain, nothing is like coming to the table. There's nothing like coming to his table and devouring his word like a four course meal at Marrakesh. And um, I hope this blesses you guys. God is so good to me. When, when, I, when I seek him and I pray and when I have a moment of quiet, like a walk to work, just the images he gives me. Like I, I, I'm such a visual person and he's so good to me. He speaks to me in a way I can understand. And Marrakesh, <laughs> you guys have a good day.